welcome to Curly Sue's Plant-Based Show. And joining me today, all the way from the US in New York, is Chef Troy Levy. Hello, Troy. Hello, Susan. How are you? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> this is kind of weird because this is a good friend of mine who I speak to very often. So it's a real pleasure to have you on my radio show. So, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so for the viewers and listeners, tell tell them who you are and what it is that you do. So my name, like you said, my name is Chef Troy Levy. Um, I was born and raised in Jamaica, West Indies, and I'm an ITAL chef. I consider myself an ITAL chef. Okay, tell us a bit more about ITAL. Not everybody will know exactly what ITAL food is, so tell us a bit more about ITAL food. Um, so ITAL, um, I mean, my interpretation on, on, um, on ITAL is it's the mother of plant-based and vegan and everything else. I think ITAL is a natural way of eating. You know, we, as ITAL chef, we definitely try to do less process or no process at all. Mm -hmm. And we try to not utilize a lot of a modified or um, processed nothing, whether it's the ingredients, whether it's the just the soap or whatever you use to be. We try to stay as natural as possible to what we do. Okay, so how did you come become a vegan? What's your how did your vegan journey begin? Um, I wouldn't say because growing up in Jamaica. I've mm -hmm. always been eating ital. My rastas, they don't cook with salt. They don't cook with anything processed. So we, I would have a split down the middle. Like my grandmother and that side of the family, they eat meat and we do different things. But then when it comes to my uncle's side where they're all rastas, we definitely don't utilize a lot of process, don't utilize meat and certain things. So it's always been in me. Okay. So, so but when did you go become fully vegan? Um... When I came to, when I moved to America in 2020, um, I realized that the food that I was eating was definitely not too healthy for me. I put on a lot of weight. I was big like a house. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, um, I went back to Jamaica and my Rasta uncle saw me and he was like, yo, what kind of pies are you putting into your body? What are you doing to yourself? You know, and when I came back, I was still eating fish. And when I came back, I started um, just cutting off the whole processed food and, you know, went back to my roots of how I originally grew up. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's in 2010, 2010, I, I officially like cut off meat, fish and everything. Right. And because my daughter was born in 2009. So right after that, I was like, you know what, that's it. Right. Okay, cool. So you have children? Yeah, I have a beautiful 12-year-old daughter and um, a four-year-old son. Who, I like know, the way your face lights up when you mention They, they are my world. They definitely are. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So in terms of vegan dishes, when you're cooking at home for yourself, what's your kind of favorite dish to cook for yourself? See, that's that's a really difficult question because <laughs> I, I love everything that I cook. But um, one of my go-to is usually um, a salad. Because okay. I really love salad, you know. I love I love a lot of green salad. Love kale, you know. I love spinach. I love. But one of the thing, my go to salad is usually like a kale that I, I chopped up really fine, mm -hmm. and I utilize a lot of different fruits. If I have mango or apple or whatever fruits I have, I put in there a lot of berries, and mm -hmm. then I would make a avocado dressing, mm -hmm. and you know it's just one whole plate of joy it's always bring i always call it my tropical salad because it definitely remind me of the caribbean with all the caribbean fruits and everything in it you know growing up in jamaica i eat a lot of um, avocado i would call it pear so you know to make that avocado dressing and just blend it with the mango and stuff you know that's one of my go-to mm -hmm. and then when you're cooking for um other people as you're a chef what's your most popular dishes well, I, as a chef, I try to stay to, true to my roots mm -hmm. and some of the things that I used to eat or explore as um, when, when I used to eat fish or things like that in Jamaica. I, I still try to kind of replicate it or mimic it to make it look or resemble that dish that I grew up eating. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, breadfruit. Breadfruit is a thing that we eat, we eat in Jamaica. We do it fry, we do it steam, we do it mm -hmm. roast, we do it different yeah. ways. So, you know, just my journey in America and understanding different cuisine and stuff, I do a breadfruit coquette. And oh. then we, we usually eat breadfruit with aki. So yeah. instead of me just sauteing the aki that we traditionally used to, I make a haki hummus. 
and appear that very well and people are blown away by that so that's always one of my go-to appetizers for everybody so breadfruit croquettes with a aki hummus yes definitely so the next time i'm in new york that uh, you're gonna have to make that for me. you got it you got it <laughs> and one of my next one of my next go-to favorite dish is um I might prepare that for you a little bit later is my, you know, in Jamaica, we grow up, we always eating fish and bami. When you go to Helsha, you go to Montego Bay, or you go to Nigril, you get your fish and bami. Mm -hmm. So I make a, um, my version of fish and bami, Escovich fish and bami. So what's the vegan version? So that? usually I, I use, I usually use oyster mushroom because I love oyster mushroom. Mm -hmm. I just love the consistency and the texture that you get from your oyster mushroom, especially if you season it well. Mm -hmm. and you fry it well it definitely give you that remnants of you know some kind of protein that you're used to eating right so yours is called ish and bami isn't it ish and bami <laughs> so we take off the f off of it <laughs> <laughs> ish and bami. no that's great so i know you've done because that's how we met through television so i know you've done got some experience of doing television how did you start um in cooking on tv um you know what i as, as, as a young kid, I always used to watch like Food Network in Jamaica. Even when I was in Jamaica, I always used to like to watch cooking shows, especially food, the Food Network. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there weren't a lot of black chefs on the Food Network when I was younger. Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. I've always tell myself, like, if I get the opportunity to cook on the Food Network, that would be one of my greatest accomplishments and achievements. And it so happened that I, every restaurant that I go to, because you know, in, in New York, I have gone to different restaurants to cook. You know, when we're coming up into the ranks, um, we cook in a lot of different restaurant spaces. And everybody that I cook with, I always try to teach them or I try to lift them up or elevate them in their craft in the best way I know how to. Yes. You know, even though, because uh, it's never too late to learn. So you can learn something from somebody, you could teach them something as well. So that's what I used to do. I always used to trade my knowledge for other knowledge. And one of my good friends that I pass... Um, cook that I used to cook with he told me that um there was an opportunity for the food network and you know when when I heard that I jumped to the I jumped to the opportunity right away and you know we chop it up we speak we send in my pictures of my dishes and stuff like mm -hmm. that and they, they respond back to me say they like it they invited me for a trail and mm -hmm. uh, you know a trail is like a trial that you go in and you'll present them with a dish they give you 30 minutes you present a dish mm -hmm. and when I went in there and I did a dish before I because this is in Jersey and I'm in Brooklyn. And yeah. before I got back to Brooklyn, I got a few calls from them telling me like, this dish was awesome. Oh, you know, we love your dish and that. Yeah. So I, was, I, I became one of the contestants on um, the Cooks versus Khan challenge. Mm -hmm. It was an yeah. awesome, awesome experience. Oh, brilliant. So, you know, yeah. we, we, and we, I did a lot of interview with, you know, do demo, live demo for different TV stations and stuff. So, you know, I, you know, I know my way around the place. As it yes. relates to the media. <laughs> That's good. So what other TV stuff have you done? I know you've done some stuff for BronxNet TV. Yes, I did an interview and a demonstration for BronxNet TV. And mm -hmm. I also did CIN TV where Come Chat With Me um, was a feature that was on the CIN TV that every week I would present a new recipe for the, the channel. So yeah, we oh. did a lot, of, a lot of that, which you know, bring a lot of customers and, and allow people to know who I am and what I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant. So you're quite a superstar. Then. I would consider myself a restaurant <laughs> from Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am I'm very humble because I know at the end of the day, you know, I put my work is just showing. I put in a lot of work in what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful okay. for that. So, um, what plans do you have for the future in terms of where you're going with your business and so forth? Well, I have established a catering business, Taste of Ital, mm -hmm. and Taste of Ital is basically um, a whole company. There's a lot of different moving parts, but it's a whole company. Of, we do a lot of catering. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of live dinner pop-ups. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having a pop-up on April 2nd. 2020 22 and um so i i went to east africa doing the same taste of ital pop-up dinner so what i do is i tour the whole world and and you know kind of encourage them and enlighten them on what ital is because like you said a lot of people don't know what ital is no. you know, so i try to teach people my way of cooking and teach them where i come from and my culture mm -hmm. so That's my great. my ambition is definitely to have a nice brick and mortar space that mm -hmm. i could have people come there and just 
enjoy my cooking? I think if I lived in New York and you have a brick and mortar, I'd be huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just turn, I wouldn't bother cooking. I'd just think, you know what, there's no, I'd just buy a house with no kitchen. I'd just turn up, but well, no, I could never do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be awesome. <laughs> Pardon? And that would be awesome. <laughs> yes. No, I, 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 obviously experienced your dishes when we were filming overseas and yeah you do some really great great dishes. thank you i truly appreciate that good you bring a nice twist to vegan cuisine which is great because there's so much creativity that can be brought to cuisine in general particularly yes. vegan as well and i like i like what you do so okay. i know yeah. you've got a dish you're going to cook for me today what are you making for me today yes yeah, so i'm gonna be making a Ish and bami. All right. So I, have my, I have my pot on the stove and I'm mm -hmm. going to just add some um, grapeseed oil to it. Yeah. Because I think grapeseed oil is more healthy for you um, mm -hmm. and it don't burn as fast as olive oil. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just overall a good oil to cook with. So I just had so, some to the pot. So it, uh, it heats, yes, it has a higher heating point than olive oil. Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay, so these explain are, what are some fresh, these are some fresh oyster mushroom. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So explain what bami is for people who are not familiar with that, please. Um, bami, give me a second. Let me grab the bami. Bami is um a yuca. Yuca, like as in cassava. Yes. Okay. It's, which is the same thing. Some people call it yuca. Some countries it's called cassava. Mm -hmm. I think it's a Spanish country called it yuca. Yuca, yeah. Yeah. So what I do with my um, bami, mm -hmm. I get it fresh, and then I get some coconut, some fresh coconut milk, mm -hmm. and I would just spice it up with some cinnamon and some vanilla, and just just to, just to infuse the bami. Mm -hmm. And then I just leave it to soak for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So while my oil is getting hot, the bami is ready to go in the oil. I'm mm -hmm. just going to season my oyster. Yeah. An oyster mushroom, mm -hmm. a lot of people tell you that you should not wash your mushroom. But I don't me, understand. Mm, nah. yeah, but for me, Nasty. I, I know it grow in the dirt or it grow on trees. Mm -hmm. Um, anything I put in my body, I try to make sure it's clean. <laughs> yeah, I know there are people who say you shouldn't wash mushrooms. Okay, in your culture, yeah, in mine, no, you wash it. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know what? With me as a chef, I try my best to make sure the same way I would want somebody to prepare my meal mm -hmm. is the same way I prepare a meal for other people. That's good. Yeah. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yes, absolutely. So I have some mixed spice that I, I make some parsley, some different herbs and spices, and I make my own spice. Mm -hmm. so I just had a little bit of that mixed spice. Is it a secret so recipe, the mixed spice? Huh? Is it a six secret recipe that you have for your it own? It is a secret recipe, but I'll definitely share it in my <laughs> upcoming book. Everybody can definitely get it or make it themselves. Okay. They don't want to buy it. I'm adding a little bit of Emily and salt too. What salt? A million. A million salt. Okay, I haven't yeah. heard of a million salt. Yeah. And a little bit of coconut amino. Yes, I love that. You just put a little bit on, on it. And that, I, I think, you know, you just, as a chef, we have to understand that flavor is key, especially when we're cooking plant-based food, vegan food, or ital food, because we don't have nothing processed in it. So it has mm -hmm. to, you have to develop flavor. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't understand how to develop flavor, but you have to make it taste good because a lot of people have the perception that, oh, it's vegan food, it doesn't taste good. Mm. You know, some so people think, or some people think, oh, it's vegetables, so you don't need to put anything on it. Exactly. Why, exactly. why do they? I just marinate my oyster mushroom, put it aside. Mm -hmm. and while this is being marinated this is some flour so mm -hmm. basically this is some wheat flour and some spelt flour and i'll just put some of my same seasoning in there mm -hmm. also I've, I've put a little bit of cayenne in there and a little bit of a million pink salt that's it mm -hmm. so this is my bami mm -hmm. so it's been soaking for a few hours now so you know it's infused with all the awesome flavors 
Okay. And the oil is about 250 going to 300 now. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right time for me to add my bunny. Oh, wow. I'm hungry now. This is great. I, I, I don't think I've had bami in a long, a long time. So yes, I'm looking forward to oh, virtually that? trying it. I haven't had bami in a while, so I'm looking forward to virtually trying this. I can't hear you. What are you saying? I'm looking forward to virtually trying this. Absolutely, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my friend Chef Ricardo said, it's gonna be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. <laughs> Absolutely. So you know, I just fry my bami to a nice crisp. So mm -hmm. while that is getting fried, I'll just prepare prepare my calabash. Now this is a um, calabash is something that a lot of Rasta and the indigenous people of Jamaica used to eat from. Yes. So they would just get the fruit and clean the fruit out of it and then they dry it. Some of them would even put some design on it. Mm -hmm. But they are very, if you get some good calabash. It served a long time. So did you buy that in America or did you buy it yes. in Jamaica? Yes, I bought it in America. Oh, okay. Yeah, they definitely sold them in America as well. These bami is looking very beautiful. Okay. So while my bami is getting golden, mm -hmm. this is a next trick that a lot of people don't understand when you're cooking mushroom because especially for oyster mushrooms, Yeah. when you season it, it, it definitely has a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So I use that same water as the batter. So in, in, instead of a lot of people like dipping it and making a different batter for it, the same moisture that's in the bam, you just squeeze out a, a decent amount of it. Mm -hmm. And then you use the rest to bread it. So oh, you, so you just bread it without dipping it into like a milk. Exactly. Like milk. Oh, okay. So then it's not as wet inside. Exactly. It's not as wet, but it's definitely create that crust outside that you would get from if you dip it in a batter as well. That is good to know. Mm. Definitely. So now all we got to do is just bread it. Mm -hmm. And what I do to create that crust is squeeze the flour on it mm -hmm. and just shape it however you want to shape it. I yeah. shape it. You know, I got to shape it like an ish because it's an ish and bami, right? <laughs> <laughs> what shape is an ish? <laughs> It'll just look like a, a piece of fish tender. <laughs> okay. So you've obviously so done a lot of research and with regards we're gonna to this We're going to just give recipe. this bami another turn. And by the time we finish with this ish, these mm -hmm. bami are ready to come out. Oh, they're very beautiful, golden. Mm -hmm. And that that milk that is in the bami that infuses the bami with the flavor, mm -hmm. you don't want to fry out all of that. So a lot of people when they dry, they fry the bami too tough, right. then all the flavor come out of it. So you know you you want to fry it so outside is crisp, but when you bite into it, it's still juicy and nice. I love it like that. So it's to lightly fry it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Could and you bake it? That, and that all depends on the tender. That all depends on the um the texture of the, the, the bami, because some bami is different. Let mm -hmm. me just take these out now, because these are very beautiful. Yes. And done. So could you bake them instead of frying them? Would that work? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I haven't done them yet, but you know, based on, on, on conversation with chefs, such as yourself and other chefs, mm -hmm. I definitely start um, experimenting with a lot of baking instead of frying, because a lot of people, are definitely trying to cut out oil. Frying is not the number one option for eating, mm -hmm. but there are some things that I do that I fry. Yeah, there's certain things that you, you just have to fry it, but for me, I always try where I can to bake it. Yeah. So now I'm just adding these oysters in my oil. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do when I'm frying my oyster is I, I wait until both sides is brown, then I just give it a little squeeze so most of the moisture come out. So it could definitely fry inside as well. Oh, how do you I use, squeeze it? I use, my, the... I use my tongue to fry it. Right. Okay. That's a good. That's a good tip because yeah, it it does hold a lot of water inside. So yeah, 
I mean, yeah, definitely. I have, I have definitely tried, uh, you know, sometimes I'm like a mad scientist. I'll be inside and I'll try different things and I'll see how it come out and see what I could do to perfect it, you know. That is recipe creation, 101. Definitely. Can you see this awesomeness outside? Oh, yes. Yes, it looks crispy. It looks like a piece of chicken. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen some people on Instagram frying um, oyster mushrooms in batter, and they basically say, "Oh, it's they're making a vegan chicken sandwich." I thought, okay. Yeah. Good. This is good. I'm enjoying this culinary experience. I've also done <clears throat> um, my escovitch sauce from scratch. Mm -hmm. So this is um, like onion, carrots, bell peppers, and a stock bunny pepper, and it's pickled in a vinegar sauce. Right. You know, so I have made that. I also have that that I sell online. Oh, okay, your my own brand. Sauce. Oh. Yeah, so I definitely have my own escovit sauce, as well as my mango scotch bunny sauce. Right. And, Do you um, deliver to the UK? Absolutely. And my jerk sauce. Right. Okay. Absolutely. So does, the mango, does the mango scotch bonnet come in two different sizes? Because I can see two different bottles there. What was that? The mango scotch bonnet, does it come in two different sizes? Because you've got two different bottles there. I can't hear you. The mango scotch bonnet, does it come in two different sizes? Because I can see... Yes, it does. So this is oh. a smaller. Right. Which is a five ounce. Mm-hmm. And this is a 12 ounce. Right. Okay. Definitely. All my products come in large or small. I just, but these are just what I have leave right now. Yeah. Because in the summertime, a lot of people buy them. You know, for a barbecue, for a jerk events, or for a cookout. Mm -hmm. They like to utilize my products. Excellent. And what I'm doing now is I'm just squeezing the mushroom to get the excessive um, water out of it. Oh, you squeeze it in the pan? Yes. Right. Okay. So when you get it, you bite it, it definitely feel like a piece of protein, whatever protein you used to eat as a child, whether it's chicken or fish or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know so you want... Want... While that is getting done, I'll just mm -hmm. sprinkle a little bit of my spice on top mm -hmm. of the pami. Yeah. Give that a nice little toss. Mm-hmm. And let's get this baby together. Okay. There we have it. And these are the these awesomeness that you're going to get. That I'm going to get. De absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely saving yours. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. The three, three, and three thousand and something miles from London to New York. No problem. <laughs> definitely got you. This is great. Um, yeah, save it for me. I will take my imaginary private jet over to collect. <laughs> and it will be here waiting for you. <laughs> so let's, let's, turn this, let's turn this eat off. And basically, uh, we just put them in um, the, the same paper towel to drain them. Yep. And then we get our bammies. Mm -hmm. And you plate it so it looks right. all fancy. <laughs> nice. Okay. You can see your professional chef. Well, we have to be professional in this business. Yeah, you can't just plonk it on the plate. You have, have to present it. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I am hungry now. <laughs> Ooh. This Check you out. Mm hmm. And that, what, what we do is we just put a little bit of the pickle. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So it has a nice splash of color as well. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people like to taste a little bit of the vinegar. Mm -hmm. So we just get a little bit with the tongue and just drizzle it on top of the oyster. <laughs> okay. Cool. This is um, awesome. Ta da! <laughs> okay, yes. so, so, this, yes. so this is my ish and bami. 
So in the background, I can see you have an award, a plaque, and also a book. Yeah, so this is an award that I get in 2019. Um, um, some people really found my culinary, um, like, because I've, I've done a, a, some charity, not a lot, but I've done a few charities, and people are showing their appreciation of the awards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I know I, 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 I need to put up the rest of them, but I have a couple of them that people actually just acknowledge, you know, just acknowledgement. It's really awesome. And I also have a... Um, my recipe book, my blank recipe book that people can definitely purchase online, you know, because, you know, just like the recipe I just did. Yeah. If you watch me and you're interested in jotting those recipes down, you have a favorite recipe from your grandmother, your uh, grandma, days, you know, you, like Thanksgiving or whenever you get a favorite mac and cheese recipe, mm -hmm. you can definitely purchase this book on Amazon.com and definitely write down or jot down your recipes. Okay. And what's it called? Is it called Jam Rock Recipe Book? So I have one that called Jam Rock Recipe Book, and this one is called My Ital or Vegan Recipe Book. Okay, so if they just uh, do a search of Chef Troy Levy, they'll be able to find your book? Absolutely. If they do a search of Chef Troy Levy on Amazon, they'll definitely find my recipe book, um, mm -hmm. this one or the Jam Rock book, and they'll also find my meal planner. My meal planner is another book that I have on Amazon as well. Okay. And, so you know, and my sauces are definitely shipped worldwide. Mm -hmm. my condiments and you know so if you're interested in in purchasing or you know you could definitely find me at cheftroystable.com oh that's your website okay yeah, website. right so now shamelessly plug yourself where can people find you on social media so on my instagram page is chef troy t-r-o-y-s chef troy's underscore table mm -hmm. my website is cheftroytable.com mm -hmm. facebook is chef troy levy mm -hmm. And um, TikTok is Chef Troy Levy as well. Okay. <laughs> and um, Twitter is Chef Troy first. Mm -hmm. so definitely. And YouTube? And YouTube is the Chef Troy Levy, Chef Troy Ital Table. So yeah. you can see the Chef Troy Ital Table. And I, I have a few videos on YouTube, but we'll definitely put more, be more consistent with that as well. You know, we're just okay. putting things together because at the end of the day, I think I'm a professionalist. I like to make sure things is professionally done mm -hmm. if I'm going to do it. This is brilliant. So thank you so much. I've enjoyed speaking with you today. Um, you. It was a pleasure. The pleasure is all <laughs> mine. I truly appreciate this. And no I hope problem. everybody see it. And if they get a chance, they could try the recipe as well. And if they're interested, reach out on social media. We could, you know, have a dialogue of how to do things and what we do. And I'm looking forward to come to England and do a Taste of Ital pop-up. So anybody interested... I want to come to England and do a taste of Ital pop up. Sounds good. Okay, yeah. That's that Thank sounds you. like something for the future. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so nice. much, Susan. Okay. Bye. Bye.